afternoon, everybody. Thank you for taking a little bit of time out of your day. I know the days are somewhere between hectic and crazy, so it's truly appreciated on behalf of Veritas. Look, I have a true pleasure today to host a fireside chat with two, two really world-renowned experts in digital transformation. In, in, we're going to talk about the associated means to accelerate that journey while extracting cost complex and complexity and risk. So it's a really, really relevant conversation, I think, to many of our customers. By way of introduction, my name is Rob Thompson. I run Eastern U.S. and Canada for Veritas. I've been with Veritas for just over 20 years now, and we touch some of the world's most complex customers. We touch 97% of the Fortune uh, uh, 100, 87% of the Fortune uh, 500. Look, these conversations are really, really relevant, and it's such a pleasure today to have two experts to really guide us through what customers are seeing, what industry is seeing, and how we as a combined organization, as a combined ecosystem, can really accelerate the value that is extracted out of things like cloud, cyber resiliency, and the like. So to that end, let me first introduce Nirvana Smith. Nirvana is an industry expert in data privacy, data governance, crypto, blockchain, AI, ML, cloud. She sits on numerous boards including Grant Thornton. She was the former head of risk and regulatory compliance at Hitachi, former head of regulatory reporting at KPMG. Look, quite simply, she's gonna smile when I say this, but she knows it's true. When Nirvana speaks, people really listen, industries listen, experts listen. So it's a true pleasure. Thank you for joining us, Nirvana. This is fantastic. Secondly, we have Joe Thomas on. Joe is GM of cloud solutions for financial services at Microsoft. He is, without question, an expert in digital transformation. Former COO of Microsoft Korea, he is a trusted partner, truly trusted partner to many of the world's largest financial institutions. He brings change and brings change in a meaningful way that aligns technology and business together, the true extraction of cost, complexity, and risk. So team, thank you. It's truly appreciated that you're here. Let's kind of dig in because you have the insights and we'd love to hear those insights. So Nirvana, if I may start with you, um, tons of perspective in the industry, right? Um, you've been working in this space for a long time. You understand companies' journeys, the plight they have in terms of extracting cost complexity and risk. Could you just take a moment <clears throat> to offer a little perspective in terms of what you've seen historically in how that historical per perspective is evolving today. Absolutely, thank you, Rob, and thank you so much for that uh, humbling introduction. <laughs> and thank you for having me. Um, so absolutely, um, my career, believe it or not, spans over 20 plus years or so, I have a good surgeon. <laughs> and I've had the good fortune to have worked across numerous and multiple industries, including financial services and the tech sector. So going from the dark, uh, depending on the day, to the light side. Um, I've advised various industry stakeholders on regulation. I've been a regulator. I've helped regulators write regulations in my field of expertise. Um, although initial the initial concept of cloud goes back, gosh, I think to the 1960s, I can actually remember when telecommunications companies started offering an iteration of it. And when they began offering VPNs, like uh, private virtual networks back in the 90s, and then in the noughties, when Amazon created its subsidiary AWS. So although these days we're kind of seeing businesses adopting the cloud more and more as a way to improve efficiency, reduce the cost of software management, but it really hasn't always been that easy at all. And I remember the days where the regulators were very dubious of the cloud um, and storing any data off premises. It was such an alien concept to them. In the financial services sector, for example, the adoption of cloud technology has been really an up uphill battle. Um, and really, at the beginning, there was a lot of reluctance by firms and a lot of pushback by the regulators. And I was involved in a lot of the discussions behind the scenes there where, you know, it was just so alien to them. So as you may or may, or may, or may not know, financial services organizations need a lot of exceptional security um, to protect their customer data. And the financial management process is very um, fickle and prone to error. 
I mean, if we kind of just have a brief look at a few of the recent biggest cloud security breaches in recent history um, and recent years, we can kind of see where that hesitancy also comes from too. So uh, one of the four horsemen of the apocalypse, as I like to call them, uh, Facebook or AKA Meta um, was breached, I think it was sometimes in, uh, before August, 2019, but decided not to notify over 530 million of its users that their personal data was stolen. And right after that, they posted a public database. It was posted to public database. And I think the data included phone numbers, full names, location, really serious uh, information, personal information that was used and leaked. Uh, again, 2019, I think it was a right time for security breaches. I recall, I believe it was around November time as well, that uh, Alibaba was hit with, um, uh, you know, a, a breach with their um, operations, etc. And it impacted more than I think 1.1 billion pieces of user information and data and the attack had happened over months over eight months i believe um so you know some software developer trolled the site and secretly scraped the user information etc and again another example like alibaba in 2021 the most recent one that i remember off the top of my head i think was linkedin uh where that also fell victim to data scraping breaches and affecting 700 million profiles and the information was primarily public but still it was hacked so it doesn't come as much of a surprise that due to these concerns a lot of financial services organizations have resisted the cloud-based technology so far but in saying that we're seeing that many in the financial services industry are uh, proving that the cloud not only provides the needed security that they need, but can also provide and improve accuracy and efficiency within the financial services sector. Also, um, I believe it was a Deloitte report that mentioned in recent years, we see that the cloud market grew even faster in 2020 than in 2019, uh, even during the steepest economic contraction that we've seen in modern his history. Um, this has been due to the increased demand driven by COVID-19 and the lockdowns, and I'm sure we're gonna mention more about that, but that's, that's kind of my um, uh, introduction as it were. I hope that helps. Uh, that, that's super helpful. It, it, it's interesting, I was reading a Gartner report that talks about the spend, the cloud spend at 500 billion in calendar year uh, 22, expected to be 600 billion in calendar year 23. So look, when we when we talk to our customers, we do a ton of briefings, executive briefings, and we were talking about this a little before the call. The two common threads that we're being asked as a function of Veritas is, first of all, how do you enable a level of cyber resiliency that we haven't seen before? And we obviously have a really interesting story around that. And secondly, that said, how do you expedite our journey to the cloud and extracting that value that we expect, that, that elasticity of uh, shift from, from business desire to uh, technology fulfilling that business desire? So, so thank you for that. That's a wonderful perspective. Joe, so let me, let, me, let me shift to you kind of with the same question. Obviously, you're, you're touching most of the financial similar to us. What, what kind of perspective in terms of how the market has shifted from uh, at least a cloud or a digital transformation perspective. What are you seeing in your, your kind of top accounts, if you will? Yeah, thank you, Rob. And I also appreciate the great introduction from earlier. You know, as Nirvana was saying, when we talk about the historical context here, history really does dictate the future. Um, cloud has been around for a long time and whether people knew it or not, like Hotmail, right? And being able to use email in the cloud. There's some of the first iterations when consumers were really taking advantage of it. You know, here at Microsoft, here's what we're seeing from a market perspective and an industry perspective. We've had retail manufacturing and some of the others really kind of step in and see some of the uh, optimization and benefits of the cloud early on. Financial services was a little bit of a laggard and, and, and for all good reasons, right? We are a highly regulated industry. We have people's wealth at stake. Um, and, and so what we're finding though is there are acceleration points in the market. I would call inflection points. COVID happened to be one, and we'll discuss it also a little bit further, that really woke people up to the need. And, and do I really have a digital infrastructure 
that can help me weather, you know, this, this kind of pandemic environment we're in. But I do want to talk about a couple of reasons when you're thinking about your cloud provider, a couple of things that our, our largest customers will tell us. You know, security and resiliency, really important. And that, that can't be taken lightly. Uh, here at Microsoft, we have, you know, what we call a zero trust policy, a real, you know, trust framework on our security platform. And we partner with companies like Veritas to make sure we get very, very specific at the financial services layer, whether you're a banking customer, whether you're doing large wealth management, in, you know, in the insurance space, um, recovery at scale. You know, when you think about it, the relationship between a customer and a vendor really become more of a customer and partner in this cloud space. We're humbled. We are running the businesses of so many large customers across 60 plus data center regions worldwide. And that level of scale comes with a huge amount of responsibility. We've got to be able to say, look, at any given time, if something goes out, we can quickly get you recovered. Uh, you know, Nirvana mentioned the data and privacy and, and you know, the, the whole resiliency around that, that's also a responsibility on the cloud providers, right? We, we have a very high standard when we're talking about customers that trust on what they're putting into our cloud. And once again, like with partners like Veritas on making sure not only do you have the protection, but you also have fail safes. What happens in the event of a cyber threat or an attack? Are, is, is the provider doing constant monitoring to see what's going on out there, you know? Uh, what about in the case of ransomware? Is there expertise there? Uh, and these are, the, these are the kind of questions that our customers are asking us as they're making their choices in the cloud. It's no longer just about, hey, do you have a place where I can store my stuff, right? I'm moving from my closet into the garage or wherever. This is, a, this is more around, do you have a secure environment where we really can program against with resiliency, with recoverability, and a model of trust. Yeah, that's well said. Boy, just history does repeat itself. I was, as you're going through that, ADP came to mind, right? Uh, it, it, literally, some of the most precious tools in any organization, payroll, financials, personal information, PII, in, 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 in some respects, that's been sitting in their cloud, in a cloud, for the past 25, 30 years right, as a quote unquote service, but functionally the same thing. So, so couldn't agree more. And then I love your commentary around, you know, the partnership and it, it, it almost feels as though, you know, the, the, the likes of a Microsoft, it's, a, it's an ecosystem, right? To your point, you're touching everything, you're holding everything and doing amazing things, but it, it, it's a platform. Just we, we at Veritas view our, view our our solution deck is, is really the same thing. It's a platform and it has to hook in and it has to integrate and it has to make sure that the outcome that a customer is subscribing to is far better than they could do in and of themselves. So I, I really like that perspective you offered. Um, so, Rob, let me just comment one more thing. Yeah, it is, sure. It, it's also being able to bring repeatable expertise, right? Okay. So when you have your own independent IT organization and we have very capable ones within our customer base, you might not always see left and right what's happening in the competitor or even overall in the industry, right? Across cu customers, partners, suppliers. Um, the cloud does give us the benefit of being able to see across all of that and bringing the best of bear experiences, advice, you know, mistakes that others have made that let's be careful of. Uh, so that also does help create some new layers of efficiency that didn't exist before. Yeah, really, really well said, Jose. So, so Joe, so the other thing I would ask is, you know, again, you have a pretty broad reach in terms of customers. What, what keeps them? I, I think everybody who has a board <laughs> is probably pushing cyber resiliency and cloud transformation, right? Everybody. And, and we hear that time and time again. And, you know, to, to your point of acceleration, usually board members do accelerate this journey, right? Yeah. But what keeps your customers up at night? What do they worry about uh, in terms of, of, of risk, in terms of uh, making sure they're hitting their objectives, mission, strategy, and the like? Yeah. So we're not at the beginning of the cloud journey anymore. We're well into the mature yeah. phase, right? And so if you think about it, we're beyond the lift and shift mode. Customers are realizing data and intellectual property, that's the currency and the value 
of their business. Where they put that and whose hands they trust that with is really important. That keeps them up at night. And so as we talk with our CIOs, we talk to chief operations officers, how do I know that what I'm giving you, which I've held on to for so long as my kind of, you know, uh, trusted jewels, how do I know that what I'm, what I'm giving you is going to be treated with the same protection and resiliency that I'm used to having here on premise? Uh, and that's probably the number one thing. You know, Rob, people don't often value insurance until we have an event. It's unfortunate, right? You know, whether it's car insurance or home insurance or whatever. But the moment we have uh, a casualty, we want to know that we're covered, we're protected. Who do I turn to? And that is the kind of, uh, that's the level of trust and experience they're looking for from us. So when we're having those conversations, can we depend on you? What is the resiliency as far as uptime? What happens in the event of a failure? And most importantly, nowadays, especially with the way the globe has become really digital and connected, who are the bad actors out there? Am I protected against them? What happens if someone says, I've got a hold of your data and I'm about to release it out to the world if you don't pay me? Right. So those are the kind of scenarios that our customers are really concerned about. Uh, and for good reason, in, in our financial services industry, this is a this is a big um, you know, highly sensitive market when you, when you think about those scenarios. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Listen, I, I and, and by the way, I love your analogy to, you know, to, to really bring value or intelligence, right? Everything comes down into some respects, reg regression analysis, right? The bigger the pool, the more pointed your analysis can be, your intelligence can be. And, and I couldn't agree more, you know, all of our customers, their problems are somewhat uniform. Nuances of each, but they're somewhat uniform. So you can catch, to your point, a little bit earlier, the bad actors. You can catch the trends. You can catch how can we extract a little more value to, to, to a given customer. So again, that kind of portfolio perspective, the wider lens really, really is valuable. And we talk about that all the time as it relates to that which we house at Veritas from a data protection being the world's largest data protection. There's tons of insights we gain. Right. There's tons of anomaly detection we bring forth. There's tons of, you know, uh, uh, just just intelligence that comes from that perspective. So, uh, boy, I think that's such a pointed, pointed response. Now, if I can, Nirvana, if I can go back to you for a second, you have a you have a, a, what I would argue is a, a little bit broader context in terms of you're touching a lot of the regulatory institutions, you're, you're advising many of the the world's largest companies in a whole host of different arenas. What keeps those folks no different than Joe's, those folks up at night? What, what are their big concerns as it relates to this expedited transition? Absolutely. Joe gave a very comprehensive outline. And I would just also add that I think, um, you know, the, the trust conversation that we've been having just now, you know, it's so important to have trust in your vendor and who you're dealing with. Because as financial services institutions, for example, uh, the onus at the end of the day, if something happens and something goes down, is on them. So they need to have that trust with their third, fund, third party vendor to make sure that, uh, you know, that if, if all hell breaks loose, you know, they've got the right partner there. And I would also add that operational resilience has always been always been a pain point for firms and regulators alike and it's been further expounded due to the impact of the recent uh, global pandemic um it's still i would say it's still a time of uncertainty so when you see financial services ceos and senior management they've had to accelerate their timeline of digital transformation at breakneck speeds just so that their business can survive so we're seeing a lot of proactive thought leadership in organizations, I'm seeing that, and that are anticipating impacts on their business. Business continuity plans are being revised. Uh, we're looking at cybercrime, which has become more sophisticated and is on the rise, especially, you know, when, when we had the pandemic. So I'm seeing a lot of those worries and issues. But a good thing that's come out of it is that people are becoming more proactive. I would say that 
you know, no firm is immune to disruption and no one can have predicted the devastation that would have been caused by the pandemic. Um, but it's more common to have outages in financial services industries in comparison to governments and regulators and other sectors from what I've seen. So from a compliance control point of view, um, the acceleration that's kind of taking place introduces new risks, right? And so to be able to sleep at night, it's never been more important to, you know, uh, for organizations to make sure that they have strict evidence-based practices. Um, they have a traceable uh, means for handing over the delegation of processes, um, complying with, you know, for example, stricter cloud and other outsourcing obligations, which we've seen. Uh, there's got to be a focus on potentially winding down business and engage in exit planning for your organizations as well with key suppliers in the event of a failure. Um, we're also seeing a barrage of new regulations that have been coming down the line as well. So many regulators are tightening industry standards to withstand the effects of the pandemic, the cyber events, the natural disasters, the technology failures. Uh, for example, in the United Kingdom, the Financial Conduct Authority and the uh, PRA, the Bank of England, have all discussion papers out, out there around operational resilience, um, and they're mandating that for the first time. So it's so, important so kind of, to remember. And, and yeah. just, just to interrupt for one second. So as the core sure. change accelerates, you're saying the, the, the compliancy elements is kind of accelerating at the same Absolutely. Rate. Yeah, that's Absolutely. really intriguing because, you know, with change comes, you know, a lot of effort and, and often, you know, a, a little bit of a stumbling effort to get to a given outcome. But, but add that, add, add an increased level of compliancy to match uh, it's just it's it, it, it's it's ever more complex, I guess, is how I put it. So continue. Yeah. Sorry. No, no, absolutely. So what I, what I was just going to finish off by saying was it's important to remember that, you know, all these applications, including your data protection, they all have to be resilient at scale. So someone was, is going to get into your environment and you have to be able to protect, detect, re recover at scale. So, for example, companies like Veritas, who offer, I believe, immutable storage in the cloud, you know, they have anomaly detection, malware uh, scanning and applications, et cetera. They would be a choice to go with. So, you know, just in the sense of keeping uh, people up at night, I think these are things that need to be taken into consideration. Yeah, really, really well said. Yeah, and again, getting back to the many briefings we do, again, a common theme with those three elements. You know, how do you best handle the anomaly detection, the immutability, the scanning, the kind of proactive view and, and again, I think just to underscore the cloud journey, that used to be a pretty common, common theme for that which sits on-prem, but now it's, we wanna manage that with a platform, that which sits on-prem and that which sits in the cloud as one. And you better, meaning the holistic organization, if there is an issue, to Joseph's point, restore at scale be able to do things at scale and have that repeatable process. So re really, really well said. Um, on that note, if I may ask you another question, Nirvana, is, is the customer expectation changing? And in, in how does that relate to the adoption of cloud and the accelerated change in IT? Well, you know, I'm, I'm in agreement with Joe that, you know, cloud has been around for a long time, but it's still being classed as an emergent kind of technology. And it's posed a lot of challenges for uh, firms and organizations in different areas in respect to, for example, aspects of data and information handling. Um, I'm seeing more openness to cloud adoption, um, but there are challenges across security, uh, privacy, portability, interoperability, uh, computing performance, as well as reliability and availability, a lot of abilities. So the cloud has become pretty clouded, uh, I suppose, and customers are a little confused. Um, and, and I'll explain what I mean by that. Uh, so, for example, one of the uh, biggest challenges that I'm seeing uh, of cloud adoption is security and privacy of information. Some of these issues can be overcome come by employing encryption, uh, security hardware and security applications, 
but it's still a huge challenge. Portability is another challenge to cloud adoption. Migration of application, applications uh, from one vendor to another it should be easy in theory, but it isn't. And there shouldn't be vendor lock-ins. But unfortunately, we're seeing this, and this is problematic because each of the cloud providers use different standard languages for their platforms, for example. So when we talk about interoperability, we mean that the application on one platform should be able to incorporate services from another platform. Um, it's made possible via web services, but developing such type web services is, is very complex. Um, in terms of computing performance, you know, data intensive applications on the cloud really need high network bandwidths, which result in a lot of cost. So low bandwidth doesn't meet the desired uh, performance of a cloud application. And, and you know, it's, it's very complicated and costly. And finally, I think a lot of businesses rely on um, third party services, as we know, for their cloud. So this means that their data has to be readily available. And the systems that they use has to be reliable, especially in terms of regular regulatory implications, because if something happens, the regulator wants to be able to access that data and have transparency. So it's really important for cloud systems to be reliable and robust and important to ensure that, you know, um, there's an enterprise class experience. And by that, I mean to the same level of availability, data management, compliance, etc. Does that yeah. make sense? Yeah, it make, makes complete sense. In fact, kind of to extrapolate off that, we're seeing a lot of our customers ask questions that we haven't necessarily seen before. Like, you know, what do your financials look like? Are you financially stable? What, what you know, same with the cloud provider, right? Like, I'm, you don't have to worry too much with Microsoft, but you probably do have to worry with some really, really small cloud providers. So I think we're, we're seeing a risk inversion in an intelligence as it relates to what is the business profile of any given organization and what customers do they serve? If they That's serve right. really substantial financial services, point in case, probably it's a, a pretty viable alternative from a, a tech perspective. So, but it's interesting because we're seeing that. I see, Joe, I see you nodding as well. I mean, it really is a common theme that existed historically, meaning 24 months ago, but it's really, really prevalent now. Absolutely. And Rob, can I, sorry, Joe, sure. I, I yeah, just yeah. wanted to add, um, you know, it's also, absolutely critical to understand what you're looking at when you're doing the, your due diligence so you need to have visibility and transparent uh, transparency into the nature of that data and this is something that again I'll, I'll press on is that regulators are very much concerned with in financial services for example when something does go wrong they want to be able to see it and have visibility for example into the life cycle of a transaction or a trade or, and that event and what's happened they uh, need to be able to have visibility into that so that's all i just wanted to add to yeah that point. yeah very common joe any anything to add on that note how is how is customer expectation and i'm gonna i'm gonna twist it a little bit for you when i say customer i don't necessarily mean a given organization but an organization's customers you know what is the what is the change in perspective that you've seen as of late you know, Rob, I actually have a lot of perspectives to add here. Um, I, I love all that Nevada was saying there from a regulator perspective. And I, I'm going to tie in something you said earlier. This is a multidimensional challenge. Okay. And, and, and let, me, let me help clarify what I mean by this. COVID has created some challenges in our, in our public health space for sure. Horrible. Uh, some, of those, some of those experiences that we've had to go through. But along with those challenges, it's opened up a whole host of awareness in new opportunities, things we need to figure out. The other thing I want to call out is around the same time, because of what's happening with the maturity in digital, and as people really start programming against the cloud, you know, we're starting to see that the innovation is growing faster than the regulation can even keep up with. Here's, yeah. here's a case in point. Um, our fintechs now are coming out of you know, the woodwork left and right. And in, in a lot of ways, challenging the status quo of the larger organizations that have done business a certain way for you know, decades at a time. You, know, you take the likes of a Robin Hood. I mean, just three years ago, you wouldn't have recognized remarkable. that term, right? But it's absolutely remarkable the amount of assets um, and, and flow that is happening across that exchange. So there's 
a true sense of survival also going out there. And COVID has accelerated that. So the promise of the cloud is that efficiency, that elasticity, but it also creates a platform where lots more competition will show up. And our customers are trying to figure out how do I remain competitive in this space? Because I can't assume that what worked yesterday is gonna work today. Second point I'd like to bring out is our audience is changing. The, the way that our um, the, the next generations are accessing information, the way they value retention and loyalty to their firms, it's not about the branch that I visit, right? Yeah. It's about the experience I have on my device, right? Or, or even the artificial intelligence little engines that are poking and reminding me of things to do. Skills. Uh, our customers are talking about, well, gosh, with, with all of this change, is my organization properly skilled? And we at Microsoft are looking at this as well, because we do, to Nirvana's point, we believe the cloud has to be an interoperable space. It's no longer possible just to say, look, you're going to stay inside our ecosystem. Our CEO speaks a lot about this. Of course, we compete in the marketplace. But if you choose a competing provider for your data or a competing provider for your compute, we will work with them and we have to interoperate. Uh, and so there's a, a challenge of how do we get people skilled and brought into this uh, new ecosystem? And so there's, there's a whole lot going on here, Rob, as far as the inflection point that I was, what I was uh, talking about earlier. Uh, and look, there's, there's, there's a, it's a big pie. <laughs> there's a lot of opportunity. Microsoft's not going to be able to do it alone. We have wonderful partners like yourselves. Um, but we also recognize that our customers are inundated with choice, and they're going to have to be very thoughtful in that due diligence, asking the right questions on where do I want to get to in 24 months. But I recognize that there's a compelling need for me to figure it out quickly if I'm still going to be in business. Yeah, I, look, I think it's such a healthy, healthy perspective. And I agree with you, this, 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 the, the pandemic, as absolutely horrible as it has been, has forced a lot of good change, at least from a business and technology perspective. And, and, I, and I, to your point, I do mean forced. It's funny, we were meeting with a CIO just the other day, and we were talking about the value of the interoperability of tech. And, you know, we can do many, many things, you know, it, you know, we can do data protection and, and, and do it really well in M365. We can, we can extract cost complexity and risk out of, you know, an Azure data protection. We can, we can simultaneously have the same look and feel as it relates to what's on-prem and, and, and what's in Azure. But you know what the CIO came back and said? He goes, love that. Without question, need that. Super exciting. But what I really need, it is I need knowledge interoperability right? Because that's the cost, right? I want my, my customer on your platform, Veritas, I don't care if it's on-prem, in the cloud, wherever, it has to be the same look and feel. It has to be OS agnostic. It has to be consumable, very consumable for my people and my client to make it cost-effective, to make it effective in terms of their transformational journey. So it's it's funny you mentioned that. It's it boy is that spot on. It really yeah. is all about that learning in the ability to consume at an exponential rate. And to do that, you have to have a common thread of knowledge, right? And you can't go higher for all kinds of different silos because back to your earlier point, it is is if you have silos, you're maybe missing opportunities. So yeah, I think that's interesting. Nirvana, how about you? What have you seen as it relates to the pandemic, COVID? Um, how has the mindset changed of you know, customers, of providers, of regulatory folks? And I think you've touched on a little bit of this, but anything to add there? I mean, there's nothing, you know, there's no way you can avoid the pandemic in this uh, subject matter. And I'm sure we're all familiar by now with the famous words of uh, your CEO, uh, Jules, that because of COVID, we've had two years worth of uh, transformation in like uh, two months of, at the beginning of the pandemic. So look, um, COVID has had a devastating effect on our world in the past 
couple of years. And when we're faced with the reality of everything being remote from, you know, from work, entertainment, education, to connecting with friends and, uh, and more, you know, technologies like the cloud have offered solutions to continue some semblance of normality in both business and life. And as a result, we've seen, you know, decades worth of tra digital transformation taking place in the past couple of years alone out of sheer necessity. And, you know, technologies like cloud, AI, ML being the main enabler. The impact of these technologies in our lives has been absolutely tremendous, but they can and have been manipulated in, uh, you know, when the pandemic happened, the, the pandemic is a exposed real widespread vulnerabilities everywhere and we see this in financial services um you know where compliance teams scramble to manage and monitor remote employees that were spread across the world you know and regulators and governments were tightening the restrictions and the tech had to run at breakneck speed to keep the pace with the increasingly sophisticated cyber criminals that are out there i was hacked myself my hospital was hacked you know it's so, so the, the increase in these attacks was tremendous during the pandemic there are a lot of serious compliance and security concerns and definite risks and challenges associated with the cloud and service providers have to ease those fears um, before organizations you know kick off such journeys with them uh, and like we've discussed there are great vendors out there like microsoft partners like veritas um, but one of the things that needs to be looked at that it includes the unique pricing and cost models you know there's challenges in migration and compliance and security security concerns the pandemic has really exasperated compliance and security issues due to the way it rapidly had to implement a lot of the cloud-based services in response to the lockdowns and restrictions. So I think that in this era, I guess I would say that cloud adoption is even more important for firms, especially, especially in light of the, uh, you know, the operational impacts of COVID. And I think it's it's going to accelerate cloud adoption. It's going to accelerate um, a, a lot more, and we'll enter a new, more resilient uh, new normal, as it were. You know, a few years into the, after the yeah. pandemic, and we're still seeing that. So, it's it has to be a part of an organization's digital transformation efforts and organization have to be responsible and also promote the ethical use of technology first and foremost. I think that's my view on it. Yeah, I, I, th I think that's just just terrific. Um, uh, you know, it, it's funny as I kind of look back on the, the conversation today, there's a couple things that I, I've realized, right? One of which is when we talk about that broader ecosystem, if I think back pre-pandemic, you know, a lot of the meetings we do with our customers are quite honestly Veritas customer meetings. Now we're doing a tremendous amount of Veritas Microsoft meetings joint because, you know, I, I love the, the mindset that really has come the last 24 months and we, we subscribe to it. Certainly Microsoft subscribes to it. And it's all about really doing right by our customers, right? And really, really, really making sure that the, the, the efforts they're putting in from a technology perspective are delighting their customers, are, are exceeding expectations. And I really do think that is a shift. And, it's, and it's, a, it's a community in many respects that's all aligned to make sure it's the best possible outcome for the customer, right? And you see that in, again, so many briefings that we're doing jointly, you're seeing that over and over again, which is let's understand in full the outcome, really unpack what we need to accomplish and then there's usually a pretty easy means to get there if we understand that end state. So, so first and foremost, what a delightful conversation! So insightful. Uh, I learned a ton today. The, uh, you know, super, super ecstatic. But we do have a handful of questions. I know we only have a little bit of time left. I will pick a handful. It looks like there's some investors because they're asking very pointed questions. But I'm going to skip those for a second. One of the one of the ones that came out there is, what excites you about the future of the industry? Right now, I'll limit it for that question is, you know, what's one or two things that just, you know, boy, that's exciting. Right. In the, in, you know, this exponential transformation, what, 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 what keeps you up at night, not because of worry, but because of the excitement associated with it. And if achieved would be really, really beneficial to humanity as a whole. I'll start with you, uh, Nirvana, because you, you, you blinked. I did. <laughs> so, so it's you. We'll start with you. 
Um, I think that there's a lot of exciting things to look forward to, to be honest with you. I think absolutely, you know, I think one of the, being a compliance person by nature and background, I think what excites me is that we're seeing a lot more uh, uh, products out there that have implemented compliance by design at the development stage of the products and technologies. And I've been fighting for this for years. So we're kind of seeing that mindset, specifically in financial services. You know, we've, we've had um, regulatory technology and its iterations in other sectors, pharma, biotech, et cetera. But in financial services in particular, really people and vendors and products are really thinking from the get-go from that compliance perspective. Um, you know, we're, we're never going to be able to um, predict what's coming down the line, but we can certainly mitigate the risks. So that excites me. Yeah, it's, it's funny you mentioned that. And again, in hindsight, as a function of this conversation, if I think about the amount of R&D Veritas spends every year in for the past probably 36 months, we've invested a ton making sure that which we're building is truly cloud native, works in life's Microsoft, works in it. But, but to your point, that, that took a step back to say, what does the future look like? And it's gonna take a little bit of time, but let's invest. So what we have today is that much more unique. Jose, what do you think? What, what keeps you up at night in a good sense in terms of the, the future outlook? Well, it's also what keeps me at Microsoft, uh, Rob. Um, look, I, I am so optimistic about the digital journey and the amount of impact, the social impact it's making for our world. Uh, you know, I'm a, I'm a father of two young teenagers. The, um, the the access to information they have, the globally connected network of friends, um, you know, the the ability to learn at a pace that you know we we quite honestly didn't have uh, as readily available is just phenomenal. So I believe economically and globally that there's going to be so much more opportunity uh, for people to learn and grow in this space. And as we get more, more folks into technology and more into the workforce, we're going to see that innovation just kind of continue to pile on. Uh, so, hey, look, I mean, it wasn't that long ago when we were dreaming about cars being able to drive themselves, right? And, and, and here we go. We're, we're, we're kind of there. And the same way we will see innovation in just a lot of the day-to-day, -day, the way we operate, the way we connect, the way we travel. Uh, and I'm just thrilled about that. You know, so yeah. we're, we're on a great pace here. Yeah, it's, it's pretty exciting. I was thinking of that the other day. I mean, look, the amount of information ask, access is startling. Anybody can access it. Anybody that wants to access Anybody wants to learn. I mean, it really is a, a remarkable, remarkable time. In everything, in, from my belief, I mean, our, our backdrop from our strategy is autonomous data protection, autonomous data management, right? It, it, you shouldn't even know what's happening. It just happens, right? It scales as desired. It's, you know, it's pretty interesting you mentioned that as a, uh, from a car driving perspective, but I think that's where technology is going, right? It really is going to cater to the, hu the, the humanities in terms of driving knowledge and driving access, driving curiosity. So, so I think that's just superbly well said, Joe. So look team, I think we're just about out of time. I truly, truly want to thank the broader group for taking a break out of the day. I get life is hectic, but just to, just, just to pause and learn a little something, um, via the technology at hand in these, these wonderful, wonderful speakers. Um, it's truly appreciated. On behalf of Veritas, both Jose and Nirvana, thank you. This was a wonderful chat. The fire wasn't that warm, but it's pretty warm outside, so we're okay with that. Um, I wanted to thank the broader team. Here's what I'd encourage, right? For those folks listening, have a little bit of faith in terms of do a briefing, have a broader conversation, have some, think of some big, big ideas, bring Veritas to the table, bring Microsoft to the table, and let's go solve some really grand problems because more than likely we've seen them before. And if we haven't, we should have. So we love fixing things. We like bending things. We like being very forward in thought. And uh, there's a lot of things we can do. So again, team, really appreciate all the time. Hopefully this was very informative. And thank you both for uh, spending a little time next to the fire with me. It was truly enjoyable. And thank you. Thank you so much. Pleasure. Thank Bye, everybody. You, Bob. It was wonderful being here. Thanks again.